A big part of the research mission on the International Space Station is designed to find out how human beings respond to being in a weightless environment for an extended period of time, because that's what it will take to complete the planned missions of exploration beyond low Earth orbit. In fact, those trips are going to take more than the six months that crew members have been spending on the station so far. So next year, two crew members are launching on the first year-long mission of this program. Veteran station crew members Mikhail Kornienko of Roscosmos and Scott Kelly of NASA have been preparing for this flight for a year already, and they have another year to go before they launch in late March of 2015. I got to spend a few minutes with Scott Kelly yesterday, and I asked him what's different about getting ready for a year in space as compared to six months on orbit. Well, uh, from a training perspective, the uh, a lot of it's very similar to what I went through last time, um, with some exceptions, obviously. Uh, the fact that I'll be up there with twice as many people. Some of the training you do, you have to do with your uh, fellow crew members, especially things like uh, the emergency training. I'll uh, have to do not twice as much, but uh, clearly with twice as many people. So. Um, there's that. There's training with uh, two different Soyuz commanders. That'll be that'll add uh, complexity uh, to the training and, and add content. Um, most of the station system stuff is um, is not going to change. I mean, the station is in much the same configuration as it was when I was there last. But um, being there for twice as long, I'll be doing twice as much science. So from a science training perspective, I should. You know, logically, you know, thinking about this, you should I should wind up with twice as much. As you look ahead to that, are there things that you think you can do differently now, knowing you're going to be there for 12 months instead of six? You know, I think the fact that I've flown a long-duration flight before gives me a little bit of perspective on what it's like and, um, you know, understanding that a year is a long time. Um, you know, there there are things I will uh, do a little bit differently with regards to pacing myself and how, um, you know, you, you wouldn't think this would be true, but you do have to kind of stay entertained um, over sure. that kind of period, no matter how exciting something is and no matter how beautiful the earth is. You know, when you're doing it for a year, there is still the, the factor of trying to keep yourself engaged and interested. So I understand that. And then also, you know, I, I, I know what I want to bring this time that, uh, you know, I didn't have last time. Things you forget to make some things your, the first time? Yeah, just things to make your life more comfortable and interesting while on board the space station. The whole point of doing this is to learn more about how the human body responds to being in that environment. What sorts of things are, are on the agenda for you and, and Mikhail as you look ahead to, to being there for 12 months? From, from that perspective about, you know, extending the, uh, you know, the envelope of, uh, expanding the envelope of how long people have been in space and being able to do that maybe to eventually go to, the, go to Mars someday. We right. eventually will. We just, you know, we're not sure when that will be. We hope it'll be sooner <laughs> rather than later. But uh, in those types of experiments, we have, um, you know, certain phenomena that, that result from uh, long-duration space flight, bone loss, muscle loss, um, radiation uh, issues, um, and uh, currently this new um, risk we have is the effect on our vision. So a lot of the science um, that is devoted to, to Misha and I as crew members are along those kind of lines. Also, you know, your physical performance, your ability to function once you get back on Earth after uh, such a long duration in space. One of the unique things, pretty neat things actually about this is that you and your brother Mark volunteered to, to do some research to take advantage of the fact that you have that you are twins, one in space, uh, one not. Uh, tell me about where that idea came from and, and what kinds of things you're going to be looking at. Yeah, it's been somewhat misquoted that this was my idea and it, and it was not. Um, when I got assigned to this flight, I was asked to I was being given a briefing to answer uh, some of the science questions that might come up in a, in a press conference. So some of the, the scientists were there, um, the, the program leads for science, and I asked the question, hey, if someone just asks uh, the kind of a generic question, will there be anything, any comparative studies between you and your brother? And 
you know, how should I answer that? And the reason I ask that question is obviously, you know, my brother's a, a former astronaut, and, you know, they've collected, uh, NASA being they, have collected data on us since, you know, 1995 mm -hmm. when they interviewed. So, you know, a few weeks later, the, uh, the program uh, science lead, uh, John Charles, came back to me and said, you know, we took your question and we were kind of um, discussing it, and it actually looks like, you know, this might be something that the science community is interested in, uh, you know, especially in the area of, of uh, genetics. And even though, you know, we are, you know, what's considered an N of one, we are one sample group, and, you know, statistically that is not where... Um, it's not enough to draw conclusions. Yeah, generally, yeah, you can draw very broad conclusions, but you're not going to draw specific conclusions uh, based on a uh, one uh, sample. But there is a lot of interest in what kind of general uh, conclusions we can come to based on this comparative study between my brother and I. But, m you know, most of it is in this area of uh, genetic research. When you agreed to, to this mission, you're getting ready to leave the planet for a full year. You're actually going to be gone from home for, for longer mm -hmm. than that. A lot of people would say, I couldn't possibly do that. What kind of things ran through your mind as you were deciding whether or not to, to go ahead and, and to accept this assignment? You know, I, I had a desire to fly in space again. I just hadn't gotten that out of my system yet with uh, three flights. Um, you know, at first you think, well, a year is a long time. Um, but I also felt like, well, maybe flying another six-month flight would be doing uh, a mission very similar to what I did last time. So even though, you know, the year on one hand might not be very appealing because a year is a long time, um, you know, on the other hand, it was something different and, and you know, more challenging than a six-month flight that a after thinking about it for a while... It, the whole idea of it became very appealing. So, you know, at this point, I'm uh, less than a year out, and I'm I'm pretty excited and, and feel fortunate to have this opportunity. I mean, there are many people in the astronaut office that would have jumped at this yeah. opportunity. I was just, you know, lucky timing, right place, right time. To we are, we are just inside one year until you launch, and you've decided to to share that year with uh, the Twitterverse. Uh, you, one mm -hmm. tweet a day while you're uh, while you're uh, preparing for this flight. Uh, what what was it that compelled you to do that? Well, I was thinking that it would be interesting um, when I'm in space. I'm not going to go overboard, certainly, but because, you know, my priority is, you know, safety of flight, safety of the hardware, you know, completing the mission objectives. You know, tweeting is somewhere way, way down on uh, the list. However, you know, I think engaging the public is very important. It's their space program. Um, you know, they have a right to this information, and, and I feel like we have an obligation to provide it. Um, so I felt like it'd be interesting to do that in space. You know, 140-character message a day, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is how I'm feeling. be interesting to compare, you know, day one to day 365 <laughs> um, from, you know, a personal perspective. Yeah, your attitude. Yeah, but so I kind of backed that up a little bit, and I said, well, let, let me see if I can just kind of get into the habit of doing this and I'll do it, you know, counting down to the launch and then count up over a year. Not sure if I'm going to be successful doing it every day, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it a try um, and see how it goes. Well, we're all going to keep an eye on that and, and, and your preparations as you and, uh, and Misha get ready for your mission. Uh, thanks very much for, for talking about it with us. Yeah. NASA astronaut Scott Kelly is now less than one year away from spending one year in space.